Hey and welcome back to Northern Chris. In this video I picked up an old sled. It's a 1989 Safari uh, 377. This is the day I got it picked up. My neighbor had to help me uh, push it into the garage. It was sitting outside for about 10 years, was not covered up. If this video serves as a warning, please cover the motors of anything you own if you're not going to use it for a long time. As you can see here on the intake, it's very bad. So this design, because it wasn't covered, the cowl, just all the rain and snow and everything went in and it basically went in through the intake, through the carb, and just sat in the motor for a long time. So you can see I put oil in to see if I could free these heads up. So I got one off, as you can see how bad it is, covered in oil, very bad scoring. Not sure if this thing can be saved. But I will try my best. So it was so stuck I had to smash off with a hammer, which is never a good sign. Probably don't want to do this with a new sled. So I finally got that one off. As you can see, it's very bad in the cylinder. Lots of scoring and pitting. So I made a homemade clutch puller, it's just threaded rod, and I just ground down each side. You can see it a little bit better here. This thing worked great, instead of buying one, I had leftover threaded rod from something. Figured I might as well clean everything up while I have it apart. Just taking the bottom half of the motor apart. This is the pulley for the fan because it's the fan cooled motor. As you can see, everything's all rusted. So now I got a rebuild kit. I was gonna try to reuse these old pistons. I had new rings come. So I'm trying to heat up the old ones because they were so stuck. As you can see, they're starting to get free. They ended up snapping in about three or four different pieces. Again, I do not recommend using a wire wheel on a piston or any type of engine like this, but I just wanted to see if I can get this thing running. Lots of scoring and pitting on these pistons. Not sure if it'll have enough compression. Next step was to clean up all the gasket material. So then I got a hone kit. So it recommends putting oil in it first. Attach it to a drill. Probably not the best way to do this. So there's a before and there's an after. You can see some cross thatching. Again, didn't look great. Next, wire wheel on aluminum. Not a good idea. Just want to clean up the gasket material. The carb was so stuck. I read online if you put it in boiling water, it'll help free it. So I tried that. Gave it a nice little bath. As you can see, the slide does not move even after sitting in a bucket multiple times. So this is what the inside of the carburetor looks like. As you can see, it's all gummed up. There's no saving this one.
So again, I got a gasket kit. Figured I'd put it on. Let's see if I can get new piston rings as well on that. These pistons are in very bad shape. Motors all put back together. Wouldn't even budge. So once again, pulled it out. Had to take it all back apart for the second time. So I totally took this motor all the way apart right down to the crank. Here it is, motor in a million pieces. Hopefully I know how to put this thing back together. So I was trying to take off these bearings. They did not want to budge, but I did end up freeing them up. You can hear how bad they sound. And then look at the play in the rods themselves. So now I have it all back together. And at least now it does pull, it, do, it is freed up. So I put a little bit of ether. I don't know if you heard that, but it did run for a split second. So I had some friends help me try to clean this carb out one more time to get it unstuck. They tried everything. We ended up just breaking it. It was too stuck. I ended up going to a parts place. They sell tons of used parts. They just had recycling bins full of old carburetors for motorbikes, snowmobiles, dirt bikes, you name it. They had it. I'm talking thousands and thousands of parts. So I had to just walk around. I ended up finding a carb that looked identical. So I bought it. It was 40 bucks. This is the bottom of the new carb. As you can see, it's in much better shape. Still dirty. There's the gasket rebuild kit. So again, I put that car back on the motor. Now I want to check the compression. They say anything under about 120 PSI per cylinder won't run. I have read that under 90 PSI, you can get them started. It is very tough. So let's see what kind of compression I can get. So after pulling it over a few times, I had maybe 91, 92 PSI, which is not enough, but I have read, like I said, they should run. Now let's check the other side. About 95 PSI. I must have pulled this sled over, I don't know, over a hundred times. Again, spraying ether in there. They don't recommend it for two strokes, but there was so much oil I had in this engine. I wasn't too, too worried. So there you go. That is proof that an engine will run on 90 PSI. Again, you can hear it revved up when I hit the throttle. The gas tank is not hooked up. So this does give me hope that this motor can be fixed. Again, spraying some ether in. Again, 
And there you go. It was idling for a little bit. I just had some fuel in the fuel line. So again, I kept spraying ether to see if I can get this thing to go. Pull another 50 times. Would not go. I think once it warmed up, it did not like it at all. Probably lost compression. So thanks so much for watching part one. This will probably be a three or four part series. Northern Chris here. Stay tuned for part two.